Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory to God forever and ever. Saying together, Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Give us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those ineffable joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. Gracious and loving God, you call us to be stewards of your abundance, the caretakers of all you have entrusted to us. Help us to always use your gifts wisely and teach us to share them bountifully. Send the Holy Spirit to sustain our hope and to work through us, bringing your message of love to those we encounter in our lives. May our faithful stewardship bear witness to the love of Jesus Christ in all that we do. We pray with grateful hearts to you, who is with us always to the end of the age. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the Wisdom of Solomon. The souls of the righteous are in the hand of God, and no torment will ever touch them. In the eyes of the foolish, they seem to have died, and their departure was thought to be a disaster, and their going from us to be their destruction. But they are at peace. For though in the sight of others they were punished, Their hope is full of immortality. 
having been disciplined a little, they will receive great good because God tested them and found them worthy of himself. Like gold in the furnace, he tried them, and like a sacrificial burnt offering, he accepted them. In the time of their visitation, they will shine forth and will run like sparks through the stubble. They will govern nations and rule over peoples, and the Lord will reign over them forever. Those who trust in him will understand truth, and the faithful will abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are upon his holy ones, and he watches over his elect. The word of the Lord. A reading from the Revelation to John. I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See! The home of God is with mortals. He will dwell with them as their God. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. 
Also, he said, write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord, Lord Christ. Christ. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said to him, so, so the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he have opened the eyes of the blind man, have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus again, greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lane was lying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believe, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, 
Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and his feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to him, to all of them, unbind him and let him go. The Gospel of our Savior. Praise Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, I would like you to do a 10-second exercise with me. I want you to think about your favorite saint. I want you to hold that person in your mind. So take a moment and just think of your favorite saint. You got it? Great. How many of you thought of yourself? Right. You and I are all saints. And that's what we celebrate today on All Saints Sunday. We celebrate all saints past, present, and yet to come. But let me come back to this point about us all being saints. Because before we get there, I need to talk about the danger in our current culture of the concept of a saint. Um, About a week and a half ago, there was a great little New York Times article of someone sharing their thoughts on All Saints Sunday. And this is a two-sentence quote from that article. It said, in popular imagination, a saint is someone who is perfect and selfless, who dwells in holy ecstasy and impeccable goodness. However, Dorothy Day, uh, who was a part of the Catholic Workers, said once, don't call me a saint. I don't want to be dismissed that easily. <laughs> you see, in our culture today, we, we, we glorify the saints, but then we say, oh, but that's that kind of person. And I couldn't be that. In fact, we actually take some of these saints and um, not just dismiss them, but we, we we make them impotent in some ways. Uh, how many of you like St. Francis? There's a big one right there. We like St. Francis. So do I. So what I'm about to say, I don't say out of hate. But it's interesting, I find, that St. That Francis has only been a saint of the environment since the mid-1960s. Um, and the stories of him with animals actually, and being really at one with nature, really kind of come after he dies. Uh, Yes, there were stories about him uh, being at one with nature that I'm certain were true, but that aspect of his life really became the most pronounced as time went on. But when St. Francis was alive, his life was given to two things, economic injustice and to end uh, militarism and violence. So I find it interesting that um, he's become this really beautiful saint of dogs and the world, and yet his life is given to to challenging the economic status quo that had people under other people's boots and violent militarism. It's one of those things where like, we live in the city of San Francisco that has some of the greatest economic inequality in our country. So we don't want to be people who truly dismiss the possibility of being a saint. So what does it mean to be a saint? Well, first let me say that being a saint 
is a gift and a blessing. It is God's call to relationship with God and our true identity, not as doers, but beers, being in relationship with the living God and one another. Being a saint is being called to live a life that is a receiving and a giving of grace and love and is transformed by grace and love. It is what God gave God's self for so that we might know God and that Christ would be in us. And the beautiful thing about this gift, this identity as saints, as disciples, as children of God, is that it is not only our true nature, we cannot change it. We are beloved, truly and deeply. It is who we are. However, given that reality, that truth, that, that beingness that we simply are, the next thing a saint is, is a challenge and a becoming. Uh, a dear friend of mine, a priest mentor, talks about a class he took in seminary. Uh, it was an elective, and the professor said to the whole class, the grade is an A. This is day one. He goes, the grade is an A. You will be receiving an A at the end of this class. Now earn it. He said he'd never worked harder on a class in school. He knew that it would be an A, but rather than slacking off, he actually dove deeper into it because it was given to him. So this aspect of being a saint is not a passive event. It's a participatory event. Something that is truly ours, and yet when we engage it, it transforms us into ourselves truly and transforms the world. So, so the action, if you will, that comes from being a saint is not an action for action's sake. It's a response that manifests itself actively, practically, incarnationally. It's a movement that makes a difference. And this difference is in ways big and small. Yes, being a saint is caring for the least of these. It's, it's feeding the poor. It's, uh, it's uh, standing up for the, the marginalized rights. It's all of those things. And it's also uh, volunteering with a youth program. Um, it's being on the altar guild. It's singing in the choir. It's, it's coming to church. It's also being really patient with a spouse when you don't want to be. It's also being at work and the person you can't stand that you praying for the grace to see them as another human being. Because God's invitation to our life is every moment of our life. Every moment of our life, every second, every nanosecond, God is pouring God's self into our lives, and we are invited to respond to God's invitation. And when we do say yes to God, that moment becomes sacramental. It becomes incarnational. And even the smallest moments of our lives can be great miracles of God's grace. So Day's words, uh, Dorothy Day's words are such that we, they articulate the danger of not taking seriously of not just being who we are, but becoming who we are. We are here infused, equipped with the love of God to manifest that love in our own unique way. Because here's the deal. Each one of us was uniquely created by God. And each one of us has a unique aspect of God's kingdom that God's inviting us to manifest. And if we don't do it, no one else can. The opportunity is lost. God's will doesn't lose, but that opportunity that we have loses. The good news is, is the next moment is another opportunity. Thank you, God. And so we respond in becoming who we are. Now, lest you worry about if you're actually up to the task, 
God has been using plenty of people throughout time uh, uh, who, who had what the world, uh, you know, who fell short, short of the world's expectations. I mean, look, Lazarus was dead and God still used him. So I think you have a shot too. The great gift of All Saints Day is yes to recognize that throughout time and space there have been individuals who have manifested that very potently. But those examples are not to shy us away from that, but to invite us deeper into it in a way that only we can. God is saying to us, to you, you are a saint. So become a saint. Please stand. Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, for all our years and in and our community. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God from the Father, God from God, life from life. O God, creator of all things, who surrounds us with a great cloud of witnesses, we lift our prayers to you filled with gratitude for those who have come before us. We pray for the faithful and upright, church leaders, prophets, and visionaries that our faith might grow abundantly and our love for each other overflow. May we be numbered with the saints. We pray for all nations, clans, and tribes of the earth that the world might know your grace and peace through our actions of love. We pray especially during the COVID-26 conference in Glasgow for our web of life that suffers from chemical toxic toxicity, carbon emissions, deforestation, and environmental poverty and inequities. And for Native Americans who face widespread inequity in health care and health status. May we be numbered with the saints. In the glory we pray for our own nation, our community, and all in authority, that we might see abundant acts of compassion where truth and justice prevail. May we be numbered with the saints. In the glory 
We pray that you will heal the sick and comfort the aged, the infirm, the lonely, the homeless, and be with those who need help to live with dignity and without suffering. We pray for those who have asked for our prayers, especially today, David, Susan, Bob, John, the Coswinda family, Christy, Pamela, Sarah, Bob, Fred, Deacon Everett, the Duffy family, Bob, Sandy, Charlotte, Barbara, and those you would name either aloud or in your heart. May we be numbered with the saints. We pray for our beloved community that it too will practice generosity, that will provide for the earthly needs of our congregation and our neighbors, giving joyfully, or joyfully from our first fruits. May we be numbered with the saints. We remember those who have died and now with all saints dwell with you in life eternal. We ask your loving embrace of Francis Duffy, Wendy Mosley, Ann Oliver Jackson, General Colin Powell, Donna K. Statfeld, Joseph E. Ehrman III, Boyd Gerald, David Horgan, and those you would name either aloud or in your heart. May we be numbered with the saints. We gave thanks for your generous gifts to us, the many blessings and joys of our lives. We give special thanks today for the mystical communion of saints who continue to be our inspiration, guides, and companions. May we be numbered with the saints. Almighty God, you have given us grace to bring our prayers to you. And you promise that when two or three gather together in your name, you will be near to them. Grant us in this world knowledge of your truth, the resolve to act upon it, and life everlasting with your heavenly body of saints. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaved us, the evil we have done, and the evil that our family has. Forgive us, restore us, and strengthen us through our Savior Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand. The peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you at home. Well, good morning again. Thank you all for uh, getting an extra hour of sleep and getting here and uh, worshiping with us today. If you are new or visiting, we're delighted that you're with us. 
Uh, we invite you to check out our website, smvsf.org, for more information about the life of grace at, here, uh, of grace at St. Mary's, or talk to one of us after the service. Uh, some highlights uh, from our common life right now I'd like to share with you all. Uh, this Friday night is the Episcopal Impact Fund's virtual Night of Light. It's a fundraiser for this arm of the diocese that really does good in our uh, local area. St. Mary's often has two, if not three, uh, members of the board from St. Mary's are, are on that group. So there's a deep connection there. So if you'd like to participate, uh, we encourage you to do so. Um, we will have a Thanksgiving Day service on none other than Thanksgiving Day, uh, Thursday, November 25th, uh, 10 a.m. Uh, that is a, a delightful tradition here at St. Mary's, so um, we'd love you to be a part of us. Put that on your calendar. Uh, we beta tested it last week. We're now in full throw. There is coffee after the service. Uh, yes. <laughs> um, now, however, due to the 9 a.m. service being actually in the outer courtyard, uh, coffee is available in our Mary or inner courtyard. So at the end of the service, if you'd like a cup of coffee, please uh, head on over there. There is coffee and there is hot water for a variety of teas as well. Um, <clears throat> finally, uh, we continue to be in that season of stewardship uh, where we invite you to, to give meaningfully and prayerfully to the life and ministry of grace here at St. Mary's. Next week actually is our celebration Sunday. So while um, we will celebrate all the pledges that come in after next Sunday, we also highly encourage you to pledge if you can before then, and we will celebrate those pledges uh, next Sunday. But this week, to talk about why they give generously to St. Mary's, we have uh, Phil and Mary Albert. So there you go. Hello. So we each grew up in uh, Catholic families and found St. Mary's in 1993 after moving to San Francisco. We were immediately struck by the, the warmth and welcome that was so different from each of our childhood experiences. And we knew right away that St. Mary's was the place we wanted to be part of. Uh, for various reasons, we, we moved around the Bay Area, first Alameda where we started our family, then Los Altos, Redwood Shores, San Mateo, and finally back to the East Bay where we would settled for good in Oakland. But through it all, we remained um, connected to St. Mary's and St. Mary's remain connected to us, a constant, consistent part of our lives. Whether it be helping with the altar guild, teaching Sunday school, ushering at uh, services, our child joining the children's choir, performing acolyte duties, or joyfully taking part in youth group activities, and of course, uh, attending our beloved 9 a.m. service, the 10 a.m. Uh, remote service, um, and uh, through illness and loss, joy and distance and uncertainty, we've had the honor and good fortune to be part of St. Mary's. We hope you two have found a similar welcome here. And if you're able, we'll pledge to support St. Mary's and the important programs and outreach they provide to so many others. Thank you, Phil. Thank you, Mary. We are about halfway there. Uh, we have $470,000 of our $800,000 goal pledged. And we have about 100 pledging units, which last year we had about 200. So thank you for those who have pledged. Thank you for those who will pledge. And uh, remember, we do it together. And thank you. We'll now turn our attention to this table. We will first witness and then participate in God coming among us, first as bread and wine, uh, and then into our very lives and into the world through our lives. All are welcome to come forward and receive. Uh, we invite you to give your gift of generosity to the life and ministry of grace here, uh, not at this moment of time, but on the way out. Uh, at the end of the service. So please walk in love as Christ loves us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
Please stand. God be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. All thanks and praise are yours at all times and in all places, our true and loving God. Through Jesus Christ, your eternal word, the wisdom from on high by whom you created all things. You laid the foundations of the world and enclosed the sea when it burst out from the womb. You brought forth all creatures of the earth and gave breath to humankind. Wondrous are you, Holy One of blessing. All you create is a sign of hope for our journey. And so as the morning stars sing your praises, we join the heavenly beings and all creation as we shout with joy. Glory and honor are yours, creator of all. Your word has never been silent. You called a people to yourself as a light to the nations. You delivered them from bondage and led them to a land of promise. Of your grace, you gave Jesus to be human, to share our life, to proclaim the coming of your holy reign and give himself for us a fragrant offering. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, you have freed us from sin, brought us into your life, reconciled us to you, and restored us to the glory you intend for us. We thank you that on the night before he died for us, Jesus took bread. And when he'd given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his friends, and said, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, said the blessing, gave it to his friends, and said, Drink this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And so remembering all that was done for us, the cross the tomb, the resurrection and ascension, longing for Christ's coming in glory and presenting to you these gifts your earth has formed and human hands have made. We acclaim you, O Christ. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Christ Jesus, come of glory. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine that they may be to us the body and blood of your Christ. Grant that we, burning with your Spirit's power, may be a people of hope, justice, and love. Giver of life, draw us together in the body of Christ, and in the fullness of time, gather us with blessed Mary, the Christ-bearer, and all your people into the joy of our true eternal home. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, we worship you, our God and Creator, in voices of unending praise. Blessed are you now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. 
For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. This is the true bread which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Please stand. Let us pray. Merciful God of all creation, holy parent of all people, who through our Lord Jesus Christ united all things in his fullness, we join your whole creation in exultant praise of your bountiful goodness. You have touched us with new life and filled us with new hope that your reign will come, that the hungry will be fed, that the oppressed will be set free, that your reconciling work will be done, that love and faithfulness will meet each other, that justice and peace will reign, and the whole creation will be filled with your glory. Amen. In this day of all saints, may you become who you already are, through God's grace that works in you and through you now and always. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.